Welcome to Pulse episode 37. Today we're going to have a look at Titan. Yes, just Titan and just a quick look. Cataclysm shattering sales records, PvP, War Games, Threat, Winter's Veil, vale, DirectX 11 and the performance increases you could be getting from it, Diablo 3 arenas and a lot of smalls. So let's get to it. In some slightly different, maybe even forgotten about news, Blizzard have confirmed something that a lot of people have been wondering about. Blizzard has confirmed that their next gen MMO is currently going by the name Titan. Now we did have hints about this before when we saw the leaked Blizzard product schedule, but in true Blizzard fashion they continue to tease us. Destructoid asked Blizzard's Frank Pierce at the Spike TV VGAs about Titan's existence, and they got their confirmation. A quote from Blizzard, Titan is... The media is not supposed to know anything about that yet. It's our next gen MMO and we've only begun talking about it in a limited fashion to be able to leverage the fact that we're working on it for purposes of recruiting, thereby getting some of the best talent in the industry working on it. Blizzard did mention that they do not want this new MMO to replace World of Warcraft, it'll be able to live alongside it in perfect harmony. Thanks to Eurogamer for the tip. Thanks to all the new, existing and returning World of Warcraft players, World of Warcraft Cataclysm was able to sell 3.3 million copies in its first 24 hours of release. That makes it the fastest selling PC game of all time and it means that over a fourth of the current player base picked it up within the first 24 hours. Now that's dedication. In their press release they say that they'd like to extend their sincere thanks to everyone not that anyone really cares because they're all too busy grinding to level 85 or grinding away at those heroics and raids. You can find all the details below in the official press release. In an interesting, slightly earlier than expected turn of events, Blizzard has started offering free World of Warcraft Cataclysm 10 day trials. The only prerequisite is that you need to own a World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King account, so if you do have that you can check out the new level 80 plus zones, the new races and all the other goodness that comes with Cataclysm. If you're still on the fence about buying Cataclysm, I guess this is the perfect chance for you to test the goods before purchasing them. As some of you may or may not know, several of the Gorka media websites, those include Gorka, Gizmodo and Kotaku to name a few, have been compromised. Blizzard have released a statement saying that to minimize the effects of the compromise, say if you're using the same password for those websites as your Battle.net account, they've sent out password resets to many of their account holders. So if you're one of those people that may well be compromised, it's probably a good thing to change your password. Just a quick warning though, before you click on any links in the emails, be sure to check them first, make sure they actually lead to the real Battle.net websites. You never know, the hackers and scammers are incredibly clever nowadays and have many, many tricksies. All the currently playing World of Warcraft players will be happy to know that the Feast of Winter's Veil vale began earlier this week. So while enjoying a freshly nutmegged cup of nog, or crunching on a crumbly cookie or two, be sure to head on over to Stormwind or Ogrimmar to visit Great Father Winter. While you're there, you're sure to find a few treats, but surely a few tasks to take on as well. Yes indeed, there truly is a lot to do for all us World of Warcraft players during this festive season. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by all of this, or just don't want to miss out on any of those achievements, then I've linked a couple of guides for you below as well. You best get cracking though, the Feast of Winter's Veil vale ends on January the 2nd. The first PvP season of World of Warcraft Cataclysm is now live. Players can now compete in rated arenas for some of the top level items and titles. As an added bonus, you can queue for level 85 rated battlegrounds as well. They yield the same rewards as Arena, but you can also achieve the original World of Warcraft PvP titles through them. Ah yes, the good old days. Players can now also participate in unranked war games, which I will cover in the next piece. So prepare yourselves aspiring Grand Marshals and High Warlords, the battle between the Horden Alliance is about to get bloodier. So as I just mentioned, beginning with Arena Season 9, Battleground and Arena teams can compete in unranked war games. War games are a new type of skirmish that allow arena and battleground teams to set up matches between rivals and friends, practice, and test out potential recruits. I gotta say the best part about all of it though is that you can play against members of your own faction and even your own guild. Blizzard have a very nice FAQ up detailing everything about it and how it works, so if you're really interested in war games and giving them a try, you should probably check that out. Yes, this is definitely an ongoing thing now. In his latest developer blog, Ghostcrawler talks about the threat mechanic all about it. He talks about how it's meant to work, how they and you know when there's a problem and how they go about fixing that problem. It is, as all the other developer blogs were, incredibly lengthy and it doesn't skip a single detail. 
The main focus of the post was summarized in a bulleted list with the following points. If a tank is trying to generate threat on a single target and that target runs off to kill a DPS, that's a problem. If a tank is trying to generate area threat on a group of mobs and those mobs run off to kill the healers, that's a problem too. If vengeance falling off causes the tank to lose threat, that's also a problem. A lot of Blizzard's focus is on tanking and healing at the moment and I gotta say that's a good thing because those are the two most important roles and if those work correctly then the rest are a lot easier to fix. So if you're interested in reading that whole thing, head on over to the World of Warcraft community site or just check the links below. Blizzard are sticking with their guns and have released three more sets of hotfixes. So I'm going to talk about some of the bigger changes. To me, one of the bigger changes is definitely the nerfs to Holy Paladins, which Blizzard have explained in full, but it's still pretty traumatizing to all those Paladins out there. You can now queue for Blackrock Caverns and Throne of the Tides all the way up to level 85, that's on normal mode, and the loot in these instances has been upgraded significantly. There are also quite a few changes to the Priest class, including a mana regeneration buff. The portal from Ogrimmar to Hyjal is now working as intended, and possibly the biggest change amongst all these hotfixes is that the Vial of the Sands alchemy mount is no longer bind on pickup. Indeed, you can now sell that mount for some ridiculous amount on the auction house. So if you want to read the full list of hotfixes for December 14, 15 and 16, then as usual you can find them below. Time for some smaller pieces of World of Warcraft news. Tom's Hardware, as they always seem to do, have posted a very informative and interesting performance guide for World of Warcraft Cataclysm. To me, the most interesting part of the whole article is the performance comparison between DirectX 9 and DirectX 11 in Cataclysm. I actually did mention it before, but it gives up to a 20% increase in performance. That's pretty significant. So if you have a DirectX 11 capable graphics card, you definitely want to activate DirectX 11 in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. You can see the full guide below. The heroic modes on Cataclysm raids have been unlocked and progress has been steady and fast. The entire Bastion of Twilight has been cleared on normal mode and Halfus Wormbreaker has been killed on heroic mode. The US Guild Adept got the first 25 man kill on Halfus Wormbreaker and Insidia on EU got the first 10 man kill. The guys and girls from over at Tankspot have leapt into action recently and put out quite a few interesting guides for World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Below you'll be able to find guides for all the normal instances, a couple of heroics and a couple of separate boss guides. They also have an incredibly informative archaeology guide up too. Sticking with guides here for a second, the guys over at Wowhead have an incredibly cool and extensive guide up for all the reputation factions in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. They also have a new mount guide up detailing all the new mounts in Cataclysm, where to get them and how long it'll take. Add-on creator Daihenka has put together an amazing add-on called Archie. It's set to help out everyone leveling their archaeology skill. It can also help if you just want to find those last few artifacts or if you're just trying to get those last few fragments for one of those high level items. It has an impressive list of features, including TomTom -tom support, which shows an arrow that guides you to the nearest dig site. I'm not going to go into any more detail about it right here, but I can say that you should do yourselves and the author of the add-on a favor and check it out. Lastly, below you can find two pretty entertaining videos. These were made after the latest Legendary podcast. The first is of 300 naked orcs running into Ogrimmar and proceeding to take down Gammon. The second is of the same amount of goblins rocket jumping off a cliff. Now, do I really need to say more? Okay, so finally, let's head on over to the Diablo news. So firstly, I do apologize for the lack of Diablo news in the past few weeks. There just isn't very much going on in the world of Diablo. But enough of that, let's get started. The guys from over at the Sons of the Storm have posted some amazing new pieces of art for all of us to oogle at. The most prominent and impressive of the lot is a new piece of Diablo himself. Diablo INC gamers go on to say that although we don't know how Diablo is going to look in Diablo 3, in game at least, this is probably our closest bet. The art is amazingly well done and I gotta say if that's how the Lord of Terror is going to look, I won't complain. Interestingly, a snippet of this artwork was used for the BlizzCon 2010 logo, so I suggest you all check that out below. Seeing that we do have less news than normal, I'm going to try focus on the smaller points and sort of expand on what I can. Let's have a look at a question that a fan asked the Diablo Twitter account recently. Are there going to be more arena maps or just the one that was shown at BlizzCon? At Diablo replied by saying we'll have as many arena maps as we can. I think it's great that they're planning to add a lot of arena maps, but let's just hope they vary them all enough for players to actually develop feelings for the different arenas, if you know what I mean. I think the fact remains though that this will be a huge improvement over the open world PvP that we had in Diablo 2. 
No more running around forever and ever only to lose your kill because your opponent ran into a town. Anyway, it all sounds great and I can't wait to see what they have planned. Diablo INC gamers, amidst cheers for the Slack security at the G-Star event in Korea, have released some cool new pictures of the Diablo 3 interface. Japanese website 4gamer.net has posted a bunch of photos they took of the screens at the G-Star event. The image quality is not bad at all and the content we get to see is actually pretty amazing. We get a pretty decent look at the character window, the skills window, the traits window, the inventory and much more. So if you're itching to see every last little bit of Diablo 3 goodness then you know exactly where to look. Once again thanks to the guys that risked their lives to take those photos and thanks to Diablo INC gamers for reporting it so promptly. As usual there are a bunch of smalls for Diablo 3. These were gathered on the Battle.net forums or via the Diablo Twitter. Questions and answers are the flavor of the week so enjoy. Salvage crafted items won't return the full amount used to craft them and crafted set items are a distinct possibility. Apparently crafted items are set to rival the best drops in the game but the recipes or reagents to make them aren't going to be that easy to find. So now for my personal favorite of the week, how will the giant toad runestone variation function against monsters it can't one hit? Blizzard replied by saying, lick them to death. So in true Blizzard fashion there are questions that can't be answered just yet. No comment, stop asking. There's a significant lack of info about mercs. Is there anything new to report on their development? Indeed and no was the response. Any new information on the Demon Hunter's resource system? No and you can stop asking, we'll tell you when there is. Lastly some interesting information on how we'll actually join arena or PvP games in Diablo 3. Do you enter PvP through Battle.net before you join the game or is there an in-game hub where you talk to an NPC? The answer to that is it'll be handled through Battle.net, it's a join game function similar to single player or co-op. So sadly that's the end of the Diablo news and the end of Pulse episode 37. Again thanks to all the subscribers, viewers, likers, commenters, all that stuff and thank you again for all the input, I really do appreciate all of it. I hope you all have a great weekend and most importantly, stay hydrated.